Well, um, the report actually focuses on uh, harnessing the transformative potential of digital technology right. uh, in making uh, health services uh, much more efficient, effective, right. and more equitable. Uh, and uh, the report is motivated by the current situation mm. uh, in Africa uh, and the rest of the developing world, but I'll focus on Africa. Right. Uh, uh, there's still more than uh, 2.8 children that die mm. in Africa before the age of five. Uh, globally, that's on a daily basis? No, that's on an annual basis. Right. Um, uh, compare that with uh, the whole world is about 5.4 uh, uh, million. And that's almost 55% of those kids that die below that age. Right. Uh, even at the time that the whole region is uh, home only to 10% of the total population. So we, we are facing more than our fair share right. uh, of, of that particular type of challenge. It's true also for mothers uh, that die at the point of uh, giving birth. Um, almost one in every 183. Uh, in the developed world, that's one in 10,000. Right. That's almost 55 times more uh, uh, happening to uh, Africa. So there have been various interventions and pilots in trying to use technology in a way that resolves some of these problems. Right. Um, a good number of those uh, interventions have been quite successful um, in education, in health, and there are several examples of those. Uh, but I think the bigger challenge is taking this to scale mm. so that uh, we can reach virtually the whole universe because um, in health and education systems, we need universality right. uh, as an achievement. Right. Um, and universality means we have got to take this to scale. Mm. Um, and we know that uh, previous uh, interventions, particularly focus on simply increasing expenditure uh, on health, have not really delivered uh, to the scale that we all thought. So, for example, um, infant mortality under five. Mm in Madagascar and, and South Africa. It's roughly the same. But right. in South Africa, mm. expenditure per head on health mm. is 19 times. But Dr. Beno, how do you see technology stepping in to actually make or reduce this infant mortality rates that we're looking at? I mean, crazy, 5.8 annually, million people. That's yeah, ridiculous. Um, actually, uh, it does that in three ways. Mm -hmm. um, one it raises uh, productivity at the point of delivery of service. Right. So that more can be treated. Uh, the reach could be all the way up to the remote areas. Right. Um, but it also uh, provides better connectivity right. uh, in terms of those that are involved in the delivery of healthcare, right from the back office to the front line uh, uh, if you want staff and workers mm. that deliver those uh, services. Um, and it also uh, improves organizational effectiveness, meaning better management of the whole system. Yeah. So the whole system has to be uh, part of the solution. It can't just be uh, an app at a time mm. or an intervention at a time. Right. Yeah, because otherwise, uh, for example, uh, we know there is now new technology, uh, it's called Gene Expert, that uh, diagnoses tuberculosis right. very accurately. But if the patients uh, do not come to get the medication, mm -hmm. that diagnosis doesn't have any impact. So you need to make sure that you have looked at the constraints right. throughout the system mm -hmm. in order to make sure that uh, the, the uh, service is effective 
um, is Professor um, Benno, yes. uh, allow me. Uh, we saw in Uganda the mobile VRS increasing birth registration to 70% uh, from just 28%. Yes. And you just mentioned something very interesting there when we see how much, you know, reduction on uh, mortality rates has happened. So it's very evident that technology has and is playing a big part in, you know, changing the way health and education is being, you know, uh, used or happening today. But are the funds there? Well, um, it's not just the money. Mm. Um, you know, the money can buy you the equipment. Right. Uh, but it is actually the whole system where this equipment is being used. Right. Is uh, the capabilities of the health workers, is the flow of information about patients uh, all through the system. Mm. So um, you cannot get the results purely by looking at the shiny uh, technology, mm. uh, whether it's hardware or just the software itself, but you need the whole system. You need also to take care of the analogs, which are not digital, but you need them to make sure that uh, uh, the, those delivering the services mm. are motivated, there is an accountability in the right. whole system, and that there's cost effectiveness. Right. So for example, the Uganda um, example you mentioned, mm. uh, it's not only that it went uh, to 70% uh, percent. Uh, from right. 28, but also at very low cost, at only about three cents. So affordability uh, yeah, is also another part of that's it. That's right. So it's affordable. Mm. Um, it's also um, the fact that uh, these new interventions right. have a possibility of uh, delivering and reaching very remote areas uh, through virtual, um, if you want, delivery of services. Uh, this means breaking the walls right. uh, of the clinic, uh, breaking the walls of uh, schools on the side of education. Uh, and that way, one is able to reach the poorest and the most remote uh, areas where these services are needed much more than uh, in those traditionally well-served areas. Professor Benno, thank you for creating time to speak to CNBC Africa.